Well, it is the end of summer. I can hardly believe it. And it's also getting to the end of our garden series. We're doing a full circle. We painted green tomatoes at the beginning and now we're painting the lovely tomatoes that have ripened and they're ready for picking and eating. So we're gonna do a lovely sketch. I went ahead and sketched out in Micron Pen. Then we're gonna grab paints. I ended up letting mine dry. I put in one background, as you can see here, some red, a reddish brownish background. And then in another background, I added in some green for a different look. So you can decide which one you like more. But this was such a fun way to go from the beginning of our garden to the end of our garden after many weeks of love and watering and weeding and pruning and all the things. What a joy to eat and paint from the garden. Hey everyone, well, it is time for another painting in the garden series. And actually, I think this is gonna be the final one. It has been so much fun to paint through the garden. We had finished with these beautiful green tomatoes in the early stages of the garden. And I think we are going to be ending, or we are ending with beautiful red tomatoes. So we're gonna start painting here. I was actually procrastinating recording this today. And I just realized I think I'm a little bit sad that the season is coming to an end. Um, you know what? I may end up doing one or two more, but I think I think this is we're going to finish up here. This is the I believe the eighth or ninth in our series. And I have started. I had done a pre uh, pre work, I guess you could say, um, and just to play out how I wanted the layout. And this one I had penciled in first. It's not finished. I had done that initial layer of painting and then I'll come in, erase the pencil marks, put on micron pen, end up repainting the background and detail work. I just wanted to know if, a few things. I am doing their sketch to be faster and finishing in less than 20 minutes. I'm sketching it out in micron pen. It just kind of gets us to the finished product faster. But I also wanted to make you aware too of a couple of things. Red and green make brown when they mix together. So you'll see on this one here where that red seeped into the wet green. I ended up taking a paper towel and just dabbing off that paint. But make sure that you have a paper towel near and be careful when you're painting that we really give some um, space to that red and green uh, variations knowing that when they do merge they do create brown which can be fine to paint in some of the shadows but it can really kind of create a muddy mess if we're not careful i will say that those red tomatoes they are such a pop of the vase the vases vivacity is that a word um <laughs> i'm going to back this up a little bit of uh, even luxury and harvest and bounty so we're going to actually start to i'm going to do just a very light background and just like my other ones that I had created, we were going to, let's go ahead and create almost a sense of that beautiful, like almost the brown red right here. We're gonna create that again here. I'm not gonna necessarily paint in the fence because as you can see, this is a very lush, um, a very lush painting, right? So I'm actually gonna grab a bit of a larger brush if you have it. And we're almost gonna do just a really, almost not quite a wash, but I'm just gonna fill in some of this area. It's gonna be pretty, it's going to be fairly wet. I'm just going to let this merge in. It's just the burnt sienna. And I really what I want to do is I want to fill in some of those spots that are um, empty without space because we're not going to have this on a white background per se. And I'm just going to go around here. If you wanted to add some red to it to kind of create that sense of the sense of the, um, the fence behind it, feel free. I'm going to add just a little bit of cadmium red that I have and I'm using the cadmium light hue for this just like we had in our garden palette which I can link back to that original video where we uh, included the palette for the garden series of all the paint sweet colors we were going to use that we have stuck to for the most part with the exception of and last week um, we included a bit of a pink right for those gorgeous gorgeous zinnias that my, that are just bursting at my mom's house so I am again just going rather quickly I'm moving around, filling in that white spot where I know I'm not gonna have green, but I know it can be hard when we do these 20 minute paintings, once everything is wet, to come back in and try to paint right in between. So again, this can also be a nice way to do some color blocking. This is a little bit more brown in here, so I'm just gonna just let that water seep. Now, if you found this was too dark or too much, just go ahead, take your paper towel or a cloth and I'm even gonna come in and I might even just dab it a bit because I'm not wanting this to be a really a dark color. It's gonna add a bit of contrast. I also don't want this to be too wet, right? We can always come in and add a little bit more. But I just wanted to come 
and settle that down. Okay, and then you might notice one spot like right there where I see just a little bit more that I'm gonna add right in there. Okay, so now that we have that done, if you wanna let it dry for a second, that is fine. I'm gonna bring in the camera a little bit closer here. We are pulling in our, our green, so if you have a hooker green, a medium, and a, a yellow, whether you use a lemon yellow or a cadmium yellow, I'm actually gonna start a little bit with some yellow and lay that down in my leaves because I've really noticed with the tomato leaves that they have a lot of yellow in them, especially when they're turned up towards the sun. So I'm gonna almost just outline some of that in them right there and then we'll come back in and let the green merge. We've got a leaf over here, adding some yellow right over there. I just find too having different colors of green in the painting is just a wonderful way of showing the depth, right, of the, um, the different leaves and the different painting, different colors. All right, I don't have quite as many leaves as I have my other one. I think that's all of the leaves I have, but you're gonna see when we add that green, it's gonna create that really nice contrast as well as depth of color. And I'm not even going to try to paint over it. I am gonna leave some white, making sure you can see that. Let me come in a little bit closer. And you can see, depending on how, this is my permanent green, how wet your painting is, it's really gonna start dancing together. I'm going right outside my tomato. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that as well and just start taking the green, painting those stems. I'm not worried about coloring them in as if we were coloring a coloring page, but I am just adding those blocks of colors. We're gonna come back in with Hooker's Green, which is really gonna add that depth of, beautiful depth of color. I love Hooker's Green, especially for the tomato plants. It's really a beautiful, a beautiful green and I think it really catches almost the exact color of the tomato pan plants and I am using a hooker's green medium hue if you case you are painting along with me all right we're gonna go in that leaf right there that has some yellow in it and sometimes what it'll do too if I find if I'm finding that I let it sit too long and the yellow's not merging I can always come back in grab another paintbrush I've got some cadmium yellow on this one add a little bit more water to it and then um, just dip it in here and let those colors really merge together. Also helps to show where the light is shi shining, right? So I've got a little bit more up here and just adding this a little bit more yellow, a little bit in here, pulling down some of that green before I come back in with the hookers green to go over that and adding some more depth. Now, if we had more time, if you were taking more time today, we might grab the phthalo blue and mix it in with some green and maybe mix the phthalo blue in with some red to create some more shadows on the, um, on the tomatoes as well as the leaves. But we are trying to keep these paintings to about 20-ish minutes. And so for that reason, we're gonna keep it as simple as possible. And I can just move it around here, making sure I've got all of those stems and the beautiful tomato leaves, making sure you can see that. Okay, good, you can. And really, everything's really starting to come alive, right? I really like using the Micron pen to do some of that initial detail work. It helps to guide me, helps to remind me to where things stop and begin. Okay, oh, I have one, right? I always kind of do a look too, because there's inevitably I'll forget a stem that's just hanging out there either I forget to add the detail or I forget to add the paint. And it almost looks as if this tomato is just resting on this guy. And we're actually gonna have it. There's a leaf coming off it there. I'm gonna make that leaf actually a little bit wider. It's gonna go behind here. And feel free, you can always add in more stems, more leaves, especially as you paint and you think, oh, you know what? I actually have some more room. What I was noticing too with the tomatoes is they are just thick. They are thick and robust. They are, you could when you peek inside to find the tomatoes, it is like a jungle inside, right? An incredible jungle. Okay, that as we look for the tomatoes and look at all the beautiful, beautiful stems. Okay, so I'm moving that around. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab the hooker's green. 
I'm gonna go ahead and grab that now. The hooker screen is just a darker green. It's just beautiful. If you wanna merge it with a little bit of permanent green, you can. Now, it is really a, if you can see right there, it is quite the sharp point. And I really like the sharp point on this, this paintbrush because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in with the tendrils that are on the tomato. And I'm going to just carefully taking that end of it and also on the stem as well and painting those in. I want there to be a really sharp edge. You can see it, for example, in this picture of that tomato where you can see those sharp, that dark, dark green and those sharp tendrils. I'm going to get some more paint. I'm not putting quite so much water on this because I don't want it to go anywhere. I want this to be more detail. And once again, adding that in and we want to definitely let it dry before we start adding red that's where it's going to get we're going to have to be really careful when we add that red in and coming back on this one the little tendrils on this one were a little bit more dramatic bigger so i'm going to add that in there and then adding it to that stem and it really is incredible the tomatoes are pretty hefty they are pretty weighty and to Feel that these stalks can hold up all of these tomatoes is pretty incredible. All right, you might want to take that hooker's green and start to add some depth, especially to these stalks that are underneath, right? Because these are hidden from the sun. There's going to be less light on them. There's going to be more shadowing. And a really easy way in watercolor is just simply to add another layer of paint, and that will create some shadows. So where this tomato is sitting on this stock right here or it's over it there's definitely going to be a darker shadow there is a leaf there again you don't have to do the whole thing but just adding that green be careful where you set your hand to i just set it in one of the leaves so i'll have to go back over that as some of the leaves go down and they i'll go in a little bit deeper here like on this leaf right here what i have too is i want to create um, some detail. I may come back with a micron pen, but let's just say that I really just want to finish up today and I want to go ahead and create that sense of those lines, those distinguishing features. It's almost like the lines in our hands. Every single leaf has those identifying leaf marks. And so I want to create that in this guy. And I'm going to come back over here with this one too. And, and maybe I don't make all of them, but just some of them. Just that sense of those those lines coming down. And at the end of this guy, for example, this one right here, I do wanna grab a just darker, a darker green. And I'm gonna add that right there, especially with this one too. I'm gonna to add that in. I'm gonna take a, just a hint of my red and mix it with some green intentionally to do a bit more of a green brown. And then I'm gonna add that in just a couple areas. Just once again, creating some of that depth. Shadows, example, for example. Okay, this is looking really good, and I wanna get this guy a little bit darker. Let me back off now so you can come back and see. So now we're gonna start adding our red. And we wanna be careful. It really is so much fun though. If you wanna let it dry, feel free to let it dry for a minute or two. Um, before I do that, I do want to add some yellow, for example, like on this tomato. Most of the tomatoes I can see, you see a bit of yellow in the tomatoes, still like this one up here too. There's just a hint of yellow. So I'm going to grab my cadmium yellow right here, and I am going to go around here. I'm not touching that green. I'm being real cognizant not to touch the green. I see some yellow over here, and we're going to mix it with the red as well. Maybe just a hair right there. Okay, now I'm going to come in with my red and I'm gonna start mixing that in. This is gonna be obviously a lighter red, and then where there's more shadowing, I'm gonna really come in with a bold red. Oh, and see, I got a little bit of green that's going right there, so if you see some green that slips out to the tomato, take a dry paintbrush and just scoop it in, all of that color. And then let that dry before adding any more paint. It's always helpful to have a dry paintbrush nearby, okay. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing in red. I want to leave some white to show some of those shadowing as well as just show, show the roundness of the tomato. And with watercolor, we can do that too. We kind of play with that depth by at leaving some areas white, especially where we see some light reflecting off of it. So I don't see so much light on the bottom, right? So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to leave that alone here. I'm actually going to come up 
right in here. I'm going to come right over here and just do the top of the tomato very carefully. Very carefully. <laughs> we just don't want to get any more. We don't want to merge our red and green together. Okay, so I'm going to move through here and you can take your time with this. I'm going to come right down here. Remember, nobody gets hurt, right, if the paint merges, so it's not the end of the world. Worst comes to worst, we would just start the painting completely over if it really got to be a muddy mess. But we're going to do our best to not let that happen. So we've got the first tomato. Do you remember, as um, you've probably noticed, I didn't say this at the beginning, but um, a lot of times I am really working to working off a couple different pictures to create a painting that I can actually do, right? Because a lot of times the paint... The tomatoes are not in the right position. Either you can't see them, they're hidden, the leaves are all over the place. And I think to myself, okay, how can I kind of bend these, manipulate the picture, so to speak, so I'm painting these beautiful tomatoes, but in a way that really is doable for my level of, of um, artistic ability, as well as however much I'm feeling challenged, and um, that still represents them well. So make sure that you too, you know, you all, you all, you paint to what you feel you can do and succeed at, right? If you want to stretch yourself, stretch yourself, but sometimes when we're painting, we really just want to be able to enjoy it and not always have everything be a challenge. And I will say too, make sure as you think about that, though you always have an odd number of like leaves or tomatoes that's more appealing to the eye. So that's why I chose to have three tomatoes on here. I didn't count my leaves, but there should be an uneven amount of leaves. You might just want to do one, but do an odd number. It just looks it looks more appealing to the eye. And I'm coming back around here. If you notice too that maybe your tomatoes, like I have one of them that maybe is a bit more a bit more orange, but we don't want to use orange. We don't want to introduce another color into our palette, at least with this painting. And I'm going to be careful around these tendrils here. Really careful. Go ahead and grab like grab the yellow. Grab your yellow, a little bit of yellow. Get some water on it. You'll notice too, right in here, I have a pretty, you see I have a line right here where I didn't want the colors to merge, so I'm just gonna leave that there for now. I'm gonna put some yellow back in this guy and just a little bit right in here, like just a little bit. And with that red, that red's actually, um, this one's gonna merge beautifully, which I kinda love. I, that's what I wanted it to do. And over here too, then you can take your red paint and just dab that back in. And see how that just stances together. Isn't that lovely? I really love that. You're getting more of that, um, some of that orange red tomato look. Okay, so look at this, it's 17 minutes. Now I know I had sketched initially, so that's gonna take a few minutes, but we're just about done here with that initial sketch and it looks really lovely. Now I am gonna come back, I'm gonna take that hunter's green again, or the, I'm sorry, the hooker's green. I am gonna come back down here. We're just gonna add a few more details, right? So take the edge of your brush wherever you're like, I just need some more depth, it looks too light. And that even may, you may even want to take some more yellow and I can even add that in too. So I'm having the green, let me grab some more hookers green, a little bit more water, it was getting dry over there. And so here I have the green coming down, but then I'm also gonna just add in some of that yellow too. And I'll show you what that looks like. This was a leaf down here. Now I'm gonna rinse this brush out really well, make sure there's no remaining green in it. Go get to pick up some yellow, and I'm just gonna lay the yellow just on top. And you can see, you can't see the yellow distinctly, but it is changing, it has that beautiful, beautiful green, yellow color combination, right? Okay, you just have another variation of yellow. If my hair just got in the camera, I'm so sorry about that. I'm gonna take that yellow again. If you see too anywhere that you think, oh, I have another stock, or you wanna add just a little bit of depth, but you don't want it to make a lot of color, I'm gonna add that yellow in here. Depending how wet your painting is, it will dance. It might just lie on top like a glaze, though, if it's already dried, so just be aware of that. Like this little guy here. So that guy's pretty, was pretty dry. So I'm gonna just pick up some green, and I'll just dab in some green on him. And let that green cover in. Okay, it got a little bit water stain right here, but that's okay. I'm just moving that back out. I really actually like how that looks up here. Adding a little bit more depth. This is beautiful. I really, really like this. I really love how some of that paint is collecting right over here. I just want it to be a little bit darker right here, so I'm gonna come back and add just a little bit more paint here. 
Now you could, if you wanted to, add a little bit of green in your red, I mean just a hint. So I can come back and do that. And that will create, it's the opposite color. Remember, it is gonna go almost to a brown color though. So what I'll do is I'll add a little bit more red. And then for example, I can come back in here. Now if I wanted to put a little bit more depth to show where there was maybe some shadow, I'm just putting a little bit. You may not wanna do that but just showing you that option for some shadowing to add some depth of color so it kind of pops off the page. And if you thought, mm, that's a bit too much, just take your red. You can either sop it up with a paintbrush. I'm just gonna add some more red though, right here. So we're just kind of spreading it around because this one in particular would have a lot more shadowing on it because you have all of that cover on top of those other leaves. And I really love how that turned out right there. Okay, you guys. I think this turned out really, really well. I hope you do too. You could always come back in like I'm gonna do with this one. If you did a pencil, for example, first erase the pencil marks after it completely dries and then come back in, add some more detail, do your background, maybe add some more, another bit of micron pen if you want to show off some of those tendrils on the tomato leaves. I think this is absolutely beautiful. Now I am putting together these in some way, shape, or form for my mom's birthday, which is in September. And when I figure out how that's going to look, I will definitely come back and show you if I frame them or put them in an album, I'll show you how that collection turned out as um, one piece. All right, have a fantastic week. Thank you for joining me on painting this Wednesday.